Hello, uh, welcome. Ah, welcome, and thank you for coming. Uh, it's come such a hot day. <laughs> um, so, today we are going to tell. Uh, oh, first introduce me. Uh, I'm Bo from China, Walking Chinese School. So, do you know there's a Chinese school in Walking? Yeah. So, uh, just uh, around nearby, not far away. Yeah. Okay, so today we are going to talk about a Chinese story. Which is called um, how to say that? Moral arrows with a such boat. Yeah. So in Chinese, in Chinese, it is called it is called Cao Tuan Jie Jian. Cao Cao means grass or straw. Cao Tuan Boat. Boat. Follow, follow, yeah, arrow, arrow. So, straw boat follows arrows. Does that make sense? No, no. So, how it happens? Yeah, now let's start the story and uh, guess how the Cao Tuan, the statue boat. Follows arrows. How it works? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this story, uh, you know, in ancient China, we have four great classical novels. So one of them is called San Guo Lian Yi. San Guo San San. One, two, three. San means three. Guo kingdoms. Or country, yeah, three kingdoms. Okay, in English they call it romance of three kingdoms. This is a great novel in ancient China. Yeah, so today our story is from this novel. Yeah, so look at this map. Uh, about one thousand and seven hundred years ago. China was split into three parts. Yeah. So one part, one kingdom is called Wei. Wei. So this kingdom, the green one, is called Shu. And the red one is called Wu. Wei Shu. So there are lots of stories about three kingdoms, so they are uh, important. This is an important period in Chinese history. Yeah, so in this story, we have three main characters. Uh, these three characters are from these three kingdoms. Okay, San Guo. Yeah, uh, maybe too far. Can you see? Can you see the picture clearly? Yeah, okay. So first, this is Zhou Yu. Zhou Yu. He's young, he's, he was clever and uh, he's good at leading his army. And also, he's quite handsome. Yeah, so he's perfect. So he should be proud of himself. But sometimes he is sad. Why? Because he is a, a narrow-minded person. He's jealous of someone who is better than him. So, who is better than him? King. Uh, not king. Here. Not, not king. Yeah. So so another person than him. Uh, yeah. Uh, I thought to introduce this Zhou Yu is from Wu. From Wu. Wu Kingdom. And he's jealous of this person. This person is called. Uh, Zhu Ge Liang. Zhu Ge Liang. Uh, there are some Chinese. Do you know Zhu Ge Liang? No. No. Okay. Do you know Zhu? No. No. You, you didn't even know Zhu? Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I don't think I know. I know Zhu. <laughs> okay. Zhu yeah. Ge. Zhu uh, yeah. Ge. Zhu Ge is a surname. It's a Chinese surname. So normally, Chinese surname only has one word. One word. But Zhu Ge together is a Chinese surname. There are a few Chinese surnames which has two characters. Yeah, Zhu Ge is one of them. 
So Zhuge is his surname, and Liang is his name. So Zhuge Liang. So this person, he is also very clever, and even more clever than Zhou Yu, and also he is. He's uh, also famous in Chinese history. He's also famous for his hard work and his loyalty to his kingdom. So, and uh, Zhou Yu is jealous of him. Because he's jealous of him, he sometimes want, wanted to, to do something bad to him. Uh, uh, so now the opportunity comes. Yeah, so once, once, oh, Zhuge Liang is the prime minister of this country, of this great country, Shu. Yeah, so once, once this Shu and the Shu, these two countries, they need to join together to fight against Wei. Because Wei is more powerful, and uh, these two countries they need to join together to fight fight against this Wei. So Wei, uh, this is the third character. He is the king of Wei. He is also yeah, and also he is uh, good at uh, leading army as well. Um, so this person, Zhuge Liang and Zhou Yu, will join together to fight against Cao Cao's army. Cao Cao is from this yellow country, Wei. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Zhuge Liang, Zhou Yu asked Zhou Yu asked Zhuge Liang, if we want to fight Cao Cao on water. Which water? Look at this map. So, uh, there is a very long blue line. Can you see this line? Yeah, this is Changjiang River, or some people call it Yangzijiang. Yeah, Changjiang River. This is the longest river in China, and also it is the third longest river of the whole world, in the whole world, yeah? Okay, so they are going to fight on um, this Changjiang River, yeah. So, Zhou Yu asked Zhuge Liang, Who, uh, what do you think is the best weapon if we fight on water? And Zhuge Liang said, um, arrows. Uh, Zhou Yu agreed. Zhou Yu agreed. Yes. But we need some arrows. We don't have enough arrows. Could you please, he answered, he answered Zhuge Liang, could you please get some arrows for us? Yeah, get some arrows. Sounds, sounds not difficult, right? But how many arrows, he asked. He asked, um, okay. Okay. What's this? 100,000 arrows. He asked for 100,000 arrows within 10 days. So he asked Zhuge Liang to make 100,000 arrows in 10 days. That's harsh, right? That's impossible. So he, he, he didn't think Zhuge Liang could do that. He just wanted to make Zhuge Liang embarrassed. How about Zhuge Liang? Zhuge Liang feel worried or something? No. The, uh, yeah, I'm going to say, Zhuge Liang always has a, has a fan, which is a feather fan. So later, in the future, if you see some uh, see a picture uh, in Chinese books with a, with a feather fan, that must be Zhuge Liang. Yeah? Yes. Why? Yeah, because... In the, in the stories, he always called a fan, yeah? And only he called a feather fan, Zhuge Liang, yeah? Okay, so Zhuge Liang took his fan and he said, 10 days, that's too many. I don't need so many days. Three days, how about three days? But Zhou Yu just... He, 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 he didn't believe Zhuge Liang to finish the task in three days. And then he just waited for the failure of Zhuge Liang and then he laughed at him. 
He asked you so, and this is not an important person in this story. Lu Su is Zhuge Liang's friend, but he is also he also works for Zhou Yu. Zhou Yu told Lu Su, "Don't support Zhuge Liang. Don't give him anything." But uh, but Zhuge Liang asked him to borrow. Twenty books from Chen Su. He said, "Can you please give me twenty books and also some people? I need thirty people in thirty persons in in each boat. So twenty books and thirty persons in each boat, and also." He needs some straws, lots and lots of straws. He need to, he need these straws to, he need these straws to cover the boat, and also make some scaffolds. Scaffold, you know scaffold, right? Yeah. Yeah. But this, this, they are not for birds. They are not for against animals or something. Not, not for yeah, yeah, animals. Yeah. They are. Yeah, they are. I got scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are real. They are. Yeah, they're scary. Yeah. Do you think they are going to scare the anime? This, this scarecrow. Are they going to use to scare the anime? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what they use this for. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, after all of this was prepared on the third day, Zhuge Liang, look at the weather, look at the uh, the sky. Think he can finish the task. So in the night when it's become dark and uh, it became dark, then they started. They headed off to Cao Cao's army. To Cao Cao's, uh, yeah, to Cao Cao's army on the river. And then when they are uh, close, when they were close to Cao Cao's army, Zhu Ge Liang asked all of the, the, the people, asked them to shout. We are coming. We are coming. And also they hit the uh, uh, drums. They hit the drums very loudly. Made very loud noise. Noises. Oh, Lu Su. Lu Su was was worried. He said, Oh, you made such a so loud a noise. So how about if Cao Cao's army attack us now? But again, Zhu Ge Liang was very confident. Don't worry. Just enjoy your drink and enjoy our time. Enjoy. Okay. They won't come. Why? Look at the weather. Look at outside. Look outside. It's so heavy fog. So foggy. They can't look at uh, look at uh, see us clearly. And uh, I don't think they will come. Is he right? Yes, he is. He is. So when Cao Cao, when Cao Cao heard such loud, so loud noise, oh, how many people are there? He didn't know because he come, he couldn't see clearly. So he decided not to go, not to go ahead. But he ordered his people, how many? Ten thousand people to shoot arrows to those boats. Oh, I forgot to say, <laughs> uh, those boats are organized in a line. They are like a, a, a row. Yeah. So the first one side to the west, one side to the rest, uh, east, and uh, in a row. So all of those. Do you remember those? Yeah. Those scarecrows, yeah, on both sides. So this is the the boat on both sides. There are lots of scarecrows. Yeah. Okay. First, they use one side. They line up in the row and they use one side. So on the side, there are so many scarecrows. Yeah. So when Cao Cao's people shoot arrows. To their boat and uh, look at these arrows. So many, just they, they, they flew through the air, just like they were so many. So, did these arrows hurt the people? Using these arrows hurt the people? Yes, they all 
when she loves their horse. Uh, yeah, they all went through that. You, you got it, right? You get it? Yeah? Okay. So, after these gapers, they are all full of uh, arrows. Then, they turn to the other side. They turn the, the boat to the other side. And then, on this side, there are still so many scarecrows, right? Yeah, okay. Until all of these scarecrows also got full, uh, full of arrows on their bodies. Then, it's time to go. Yeah, before they left. Before they left, what did they, what did they do? They shouted, shouted, Cao Cao's army. Thank you! Too late, the army already went, uh, the boat already went away, and they, back to, they, they went back to their camp, their own camp. They were happy, and think about that. So, on um, each boat, they collected, those scarecrows collected five or three thousand of arrows. And there were how many boats? Do you remember? Less than five. How many? Twenty. Twenty, yes, great. Yeah, twenty in Chinese art. Yeah, twenty. Yeah, twenty. So on each boat there was they collected five or six thousand arrows, but there were twenty boats. They are all full of arrows. So finally they got more than they got even more than this number, one one hundred thousand arrows. Yeah. So he finished his task, right? And uh, he's happy. And but someone is not happy. Who? Who is not happy? Who is not happy? Zhou Yu. Yeah, Zhou Yu was upset, and uh, he was unhappy. He said, oh, "I can't accept that Zhu Ge Liang is cleverer than me." <laughs> but how clever this man is. But do you know why Zhuge Liang chose, chose the third day? Why it has to be the third day but not the tenth day? Because Zhuge Liang, he's, he's knowledgeable. He knows about how to predict the weather. And he knows on the third day it will be for me. So, yeah, this very solid one, very clever, yeah? And both of, uh, all of these three persons, they, they are real characters in Chinese history and they are famous. Yeah? Okay. Um, but this story is from the, from the novel. Um, I'm not sure if it is true, but it's, it just uh, want to show you how clever uh, Zhuge Liang is. Yeah, and so this is about sorry. Do you think Zhuge yeah, Liang is clever? Do you think this is a clever way to collect some arrows? Yeah, and without any heart, they just got so many uh, arrows in just three days. Yeah, actually just uh, one night. Yeah. Okay, so this is the story about Cao Tuan Jian. So, do you still remember what's Cao? Grass. Yeah, grass or straw. Yeah, Tuan, boat, boat. Yeah, Jian, borrow, borrow. And uh, Jian, Jian, what's Jian? Arrows. Yeah, so now do you understand why it's called Cao Tuan Jian? Yes. Understand? Yeah. Oh, great. Okay.